Good day everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. So we continue talking about high frequency ventilation and um, I want to just spend a little more time talking about the um, gas exchange mechanisms or the, the hypotheses that we have, the augmented diffusion, the bulk axile flow, the pendulum mechanism, Taylor dispersion and uh, convective dispersion. Um, so when we talk about diffusion, um, obviously diffusion is just the movement of a um, particle from high concentration to low concentration. So if I have lots of, say these are oxygen, uh, lots of oxygen molecules here, and you know maybe this is an alveolar capillary membrane, and I have uh, the blood flow in the capillary uh, bed moving moving in this direction, and um, of course I don't really have a whole lot of oxygen. It's this is venous blood, so it's it's, it's relatively deoxygenated. I have a gradient here. And you know, obviously, uh, these gas particles in the alveoli um, have a certain amount of uh, kinetic energy associated with them. They have a certain amount of kinetic energy. Um, they're moving, uh, random motion. Um, they have what's known as, as Brownian motion, and, and obviously, um, you know, a certain amount of inertia and whatnot. And just the simple um, random movement of these particles, kind of in all directions, uh, will eventually ensure that these particles will eventually start to spread out and um, oxygen will smash into the uh, cap alveolar capillary membrane and diffuse across the membrane eventually as the, the, the particles smash in there and eventually the, the, dr the overall uh, driving um, the, the, the overall uh, driving um, direction of movement is going to be toward uh, the area where I have fewer um, gas molecules. Uh, with high frequency ventilation I can kind of enhance or augment the diffusion um, primarily, or at least the way I see it, is primarily um, when we have somebody, let's say, with ARDS uh, uh, or IRDS, infant respiratory distress syndrome, you know, I have these, these alveoli that are rather collapsed. Uh, you know, massive atelectasis. Um, I also have inflammation occurring, inflammatory changes, and, and generally non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Um, so when we look at the, the alveolar capillary membrane, I don't really have a whole lot of um, I don't really have a whole lot of surface area for gas diffusion to occur. If this is my oxygen here, um, it's going to have a, you know a much harder time diffusing into the alveoli and actually getting across the membrane if these alveoli are collapsed. Now, obviously, if I put somebody on high, high frequency of ventilation, uh, you know I can have reasonably high mean airway pressures. And you know what is that going to do? Well, that's going to uh, recruit the alveoli. It's going to keep them open. Okay, it's going to keep the alveoli open. I'm going to have uh, increased surface area, and now I have you know oxygen particles here, and uh, the the bulk movement uh, or the the diff diffusion of those uh, gas particles, the oxygen particles, is going to be greatly enhanced. Um, because of this mechanism, this is, and this is not unlike what happens when we add PEEP to somebody. Um, bulk axle flow, I'll, I'll get into that, um, and I'll also get into the axile and radial augmented dispersion, or, or something known as the, the Taylor dispersion here in a little bit. Um, convection is just kind of bulk movement of gas, um, but I do want to get into the um, interregional gas mixing, or the pendulum mechanism. And what the pendulum mechanism suggests is if I if I go into the lungs I have uh, al different types of alveoli with different what we call time constants time constants okay um, we often model the alveoli as, as being all the same and all opening and closing at, at the same time and that's really not the case certainly not the case in somebody with damaged lung um, you know, a time constant is just the resistance, uh, R-A-W, it's a product of resistance and uh, compliance. Um, it gives us a time and it helps us determine, you know, how well or how quickly LVLI are to open and fill and how quickly they are um, to um, uh, basically expel gas. And, of course, time constants can help us uh, when choosing um, IE times, IE ratios, and so on. Um, but uh, if we model the alveoli maybe a bit more realistically. Um, let's say that um, you know here I have a I have the respiratory uh, bronchial here and an alveolar duct, and I have uh, have an alveoli here and then an alveoli here and then maybe an alveoli here 
and then an alveoli here. Okay, so you can see that these are all a little different. You know, maybe you have a little more atelectasis over here, so this is lower compliance, and then I have better compliance here. Um, so if you can appreciate this, um, you know, this alveoli is going to be very, pretty snappy. It's going to open and close rather relatively normally. Maybe this one will. Uh, these guys over here, however, um, are, are going to be rel relatively abnormal uh, or slower. They're going to have a, a different time constant. These guys, will, their time constant is going to be different than these guys here. Um, so what I get is uh, gas can come in and out of these alveoli, um, you know, maybe a little faster than here. Okay, so as maybe as a gas, let's see if I can do a different color here. So maybe as um, you know, I deliver the gas. This this opens up. These two open up relatively quickly, but it takes a little little longer for gas to diffusion diffuse into these. And then um, likewise, we'll pick green here as these these will close and expel their gas relatively quickly, um, but these will not. So as these are closing, um, you know, maybe these are these are still open, and then what happens is on the next breath these open up again, as these are closing, and I can get some mixing of gas will mix in here, gas will mix in here, it'll kind of get mixed up in here, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, basically what I get is I get kind of this mixing and remixing and um, intra-regional circulation of gas going on. Um, also, uh, we know that there are collateral um, pathways um, in the uh, in the in, in the alveoli and the respiratory tract. Um, you know, have little holes in the in the alveoli themselves that may connect to other alveoli, and those are called um, pores of con. Uh, if you're a if you're kind of a nerd like me or a Trekkie, um, <laughs> which I am, uh, you'll never forget that. Uh, because you know, obviously wrath of con uh, kind of goes on there. So you have pores of con. You have um, kind of in this area here little canals. Um, I believe they're called. Oh boy, I'm probably going to make a, a fool of myself here, but I think they're called canals of Lambert. Oh boy, um, uh, cardio uh, cardiopulmonary anatomy physiology was a, a few years ago. So um, pores of con. I think they're called, called canals of Lambert. But I have all these other little pathways that gas can go in and out, and I just kind of get all this mixing because the alveoli aren't opening and closing all at the same time like, we, like we'd like to think that they are. Um, and so that really is the pendulum mechanism. So we talked about augmented diffusion, we talked about the pendulum mechanism, um, the bulk flow, just bulk movement of gas in and out. Um, and what I will do is I'll just throw in the, uh, the ancient scholar hypothesis of what's going on. Uh, and tr maybe try to simplify it. I'm not saying that this is correct, but maybe this is a good qualitative picture. Um, what I think about is, I think, okay, if I have somebody in ARDS, this is what I have. I have atelectasis, okay? I have very poor ability to exchange gas. If I put somebody on an oscillator, yeah, it's oscillating, um, but the big thing, to, at least to me, is that I have mean airway pressure, now the alveoli is open, and what I get is I have a nice surface area, I have, have it open now, and at, through the mechanisms that we talked about, I can get lots of oxygen in this area here. And now that the alveoli is open, the oxygen will naturally kind of want to diffuse and uh, hopefully diffuse in to and across the alveolar capillary membrane. Okay. Um, And that's kind of how I look at it is, yeah, there's this oscillation, but the, you know, the big thing is that I have mean airway pressure, I'm keeping the alveoli open, um, they're not closing, right? Like conventional ventilation, the patient is allowed to exhale. Um, you know, the patient really isn't uh, exhaling or really exhaling uh, conventionally. These alveoli stay open, that mean airway pressure is always there. Um, and that allows oxygen to uh, diffuse. And even though I don't have lots of movement of air, like I, I would m necessarily with, with a normal breath or normal ventilation, um, the fact that gas molecules want to diffuse is enough to keep gas moving in now. Likewise, as carbon dioxide diffuses in here, maybe carbon dioxide kind of um, collects, eventually it's going to want to diffuse.
and um, work its way out of the lungs. Um, so I really think it's it's a it's an airway pressure and a diffusion gradient kind of thing that goes on with the, these patients. Um, at least that is maybe an intuitive way, uh, a model um, that we can kind of simplify and qualitatively think about this. Obviously, there's some some other um, complex things going on, but at least to me that that intuitively uh, makes some sense. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Hopefully uh, that cleared some of some of it up and again we don't really have a great idea of how this works okay guys as always thanks for hanging in there